Uh, I wanted to start with a throwback from my time at MIT. Um, so I came to MIT um, obsessed with central banks. I had had a picture of Janet Yellen in my high school bedroom. Um, worked at the Fed just like obsessed <laughs> because I thought currency was the central thing. And um, anyway, came to MIT and found that um, you were actually able to run basically a decentralized central bank from your dorm room. So I would go to the Stata loading docks, find old GPUs and computers that labs had gotten rid of, and set them up to mine Ethereum. Um, because <laughs> essentially what it was doing is like shifting, using technology to shift power to the people, right? And so how do you take um, decentralization and allow it to create this distributed central bank. Um, and in the case of Bitcoin and Ethereum, they've done that really well for finance and currency. Um, in the case of Vana, we're doing that for data and AI, right? So how do you put the power of AI and data in the hands of the people? Um, with Vana, your data um, and your AI is fully yours. So it's self-hosted, it's portable, and it's monetizable. Um, just to get a sense of the room, how many of you have run a machine learning model from your computer or other hardware you control? OK, great. Um, so today, usually when you use a service, you have to kind of put your data inside of that service, right? So there's this double spend problem where any application you use, you have to trust with your data. Um, what we've developed at Vana is essentially this personal server architecture where your data and your models live in an environment that you can control. So right now, I have my data hosted on my MacBook, so you can have um, a variety of different data sources. You're able to export this from any platform because of data regulation. And then you can run a local language model as alongside it. Um, and so here I've got my personal server running from my MacBook. Um, we have around a million people who have their personal models stored in Vana. Most people do not run it from their MacBook. They work with a trusted provider such that it's a little bit easier. But what I'm able to do then is um, but choose where it lives and then make it portable, right? Like there's not that much you can do with a model locally. You want to use an application. Um, so here what I'll do is um, bring my model over to an application called USLAP, which will give me daily motivation um, in the sound of my own voice based on whatever I want to work on. Cool, so what's happening here is I'm granting access to this application to talk to my personal server. And now I'm gonna tell it what I want to do. So what am I currently working on? Um, I wanna improve my daily meditation practice. I've been traveling a lot and I've kind of fallen out of it. Daily meditation practice. Um, and my AI model also has a lot of um, information on me. So it's going to personalize this and be able to use so much context on me while still preserving my privacy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Embrace the tranquility within, even amidst the bustling digital world. Consistent meditation practice fortifies your emotional equilibrium and nourishes your intellect like a soothing balm on the soul. Allow this quiet space to fuel your creativity and expand your consciousness. So this particular application leaves you <laughs> a voicemail every day in your voice kind of hyping you up. And it's a really early example of the sorts of applications that are possible. One, it would be really scary if someone could take this clone of my voice and use it for whatever they want. And so that's why it's so important that you own your AI and your data that allows you to create things like this. So I was just showing you that portability aspect that Vana enables. The third aspect that I wanted to talk about is actually monetization, right? So today, um, we're in this time where there's a huge economic shift and people are really worried like, hey, um, is AI going to take my job, right? And what's kind of happening is a lot of big technology companies are taking data from all across the internet, a lot of it is probably your data if you post on the public internet, and then training an AI model that can do your job and replace you. Um, and it's a, a really bad deal for society. Um, now there's sort of a race to get the private data that's not available publicly, right? So you th see things like um, Reddit is selling data for $60 million, et cetera. Um, and 
if, if I imagine a world where there are like 10 different AI Annas that can be autonomously doing work and earning money, it's very important that I'm the one who actually owns that and who gets to decide like, hey, what are the rules? What, it, what can this do? What can this not do? Um, and so with um, Vana, we've let people actually collectivize around their Reddit data. And we've created the first Reddit data collective, which allows you to export your data and then put it into a, essentially a place where it's held in escrow with everybody else's data and monetize it on your own. Um, yeah, and this sort of decentralized AI ecosystem enable, enables you not just to own your own AI, but also the AI that gets collectively created, right? So you can imagine a user-owned foundation model created by 100 million people who all contribute their data. They can also train a small piece of the model locally and use some techniques like model merging to then have a better model, right? Today, open source AI kind of eats the leftovers of big tech, right? We get a model that's a few generations behind, but really people can actually create an even better model um, if we're able to collectivize in the right way. Uh, thank you.